This is Twit. Google Google talked about this at I.O. They talked about this concept of ambient computing, which I think Kevin and I have been talking about for years. And Kevin has talked about since what? We talked about it yesterday, 2013, I think. And it's the idea. Yeah. It's the idea that Google has all the information or could get all the information it needs to be this real assistant in your life. And not an assistant that's actually tied to an echo where a lot of people think Madam A is tied to, but just, hey, G, help me out here in this situation. And Google has all the pieces to make that really come together in a way that's really awesome. And they showed that today or yesterday. And Kevin's going to tell you more about this because he does it really well. Oh, Kevin was checking for more songs with bass. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so, <laughs> I was trying to so, set you up because you do a good job no, on this, Kevin. No, you, you, it was a great setup, but you could speak about this just as easily because we have been talking about this for so long. And, and in fact, we started talking about this when um, they put Google now on the watch. And I said, context is king. Mm. And, you know, it's. Yesterday at the Google event, yeah, sure, it was all about devices. But the fact of the matter is, all those devices are just sensors and input for the smart home. But the problem is the smart home has not been smart. It's not taking advantage of all that data and doing something with it that makes it beneficial to people in the home. But finally, aside from the the chips and the silicon, the cameras, the microphones, the screens, they have unified everything under this new improved Google Assistant. So by taking the, the the software to tie all these signals together, the home can start doing things on its own that help you out. So like if you uh, if you leave the house and you forgot to set your alarm, your Nest alarm, for example, the home can say, "Oh, I noticed that you've left the your phone is area." Out of the or, house. Yeah. Exactly. And it can set the alarm for you proactively. Or maybe you've gone to sleep and you've left on appliances or lights. Huh. Nobody's moving in the house. I don't see any motion. Uh, They're probably asleep. I'm going to shut these lights. So really, the ambient computing is part of the story here because Google Assistant is the software that ties the smart home together now. And I would say it even goes beyond the phone. Sorry, I'm going to jump in and then leave. Go, go. Um, (laughs) So... We're, that, those are great smart home examples. But if you think about having the earbuds and then having things like your phone around you all the time, we're seeing Google try to pick those in with the earbuds. You know, they understand like ambient noise and can adjust sound related to that. Right. So Google's like the whole idea is making your life easier. And Lord help us. Yes, their helpful idea is really great marketing around this. But it it really is. It's like if you give us everything we want to know about you and your surroundings and we can really make your life easier. You'll think less. You'll have less mental overhead. Wouldn't that be nice? Is that and look worth, do you think that trade's worth it? I think we're going to have it like, yes and no. And and I, <laughs> today it's worth it. And I love a lot of things about it. I say no, because I think we are moving towards a more surveillance surveillance heavy state in the government itself and having Google or anyone have all of that information becomes a problem. And that's where the no is coming in because right now I I kind of have a lot of distrust around what our government's doing around this data. Well, if you watch the Democratic debate Mm -hmm. last night, there was a consensus among all, whatever, 253 candidates on stage (laughs) that (laughs) these companies should be broken up, that they're too powerful. I mean, there were some dissenters but uh, the, the you know there was pretty much a consensus that mm. these companies should be broken up and the thing is i would like the choice i would like to be able to bathe in the warm waters of google's ambient computing uh if if it's my choice i want to do it i want to do it with full knowledge of what i'm giving them of what i'm trading away i don't think it's right for government or anybody else say well leo you you're ignorant you couldn't possibly know what google's going to do with this we won't let you Right. I think everybody should be given an informed choice, but they should be given a choice. That's why I like Google's, uh, the way Google is Transparency. going about this better than anyone. Because I think so. They, they say they they are recording you, they, they, they are very upfront about the fact that they are recording everything you do. And here's the page on the web that you can go to to delete right. every recording we have of you. 
Right. <laughs> or just delete last mm -hmm. week's, what have you. By the way, Apple's added right. that now with uh, Siri. You can say delete the, the recordings. Mm -hmm. Amazon did it first. Google's doing it now. They're all doing that. You can, with your voice, say delete my recordings. It's but Google, honestly, Google I don't care easiest. if Google saves my freaking recordings. I, I, I really fear, and this is the Jeff Jarvis moment. Okay. <laughs> that, uh, that Thinking about you, Mr. Jarvis. That the fear people have, somewhat irrational fear people have of, of technology and computing is going to lead to regulation that prevents this kind of innovation. And I don't want that don't, to happen. I don't think it has to. And like what Google's calling ambient computing, let's think about, remember, we've talked about it a couple of times on the show, this concept of ambient privacy, which is with all of this data being sucked up, there is the ability of people and entities knowing where you are and what you're doing in all aspects of your life that could be discomforting. And not because you're doing anything wrong, just because it, you, nobody, nobody's going to look good if they're being looked at. 24 seven, right? Um, through a microscope. So I, I think I do, what we baby. need to be, well, Leo, I, <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> not at but all. But that's a subjective, I mean, if you feel that so, way, fine, but I don't want to be told that I can't be looked at 24 seven under a microscope. <laughs> if that's my choice. The, the issue isn't that Google's collecting it. The issue is that our government can come along or an entity that has the power to like detain you Mm -hmm. or to negatively infect, affect your life in a really tangible way can come along and use that data for ill. But, you're, so but we're asking the government, the same, that same party, to legislate this. So we, we are. And you <laughs> know, a, I don't think... You can't have a... Mm -hmm. as a, as a are they but, trustworthy the thing, or are they untrustworthy? That's the thing. Where's the, where's the, what's the cost? What, what's the cost I that's going to make it all happen? Why should everyone? anybody be able to tell me I can't have Google looking up my butt? I think uh. we're talking about two different things. Okay. I'm not saying that Google can't gather this data. If I want to opt in to get this data, that's fine. Good. What all I'm right. saying say is we need in. rules... <laughs> no, no. We need rules that you. dictate how that data... Yeah will be used in by whom. So we need the equivalent of a legit search warrant. You know, I, I or, wouldn't go that far. Mm -hmm. I would say we need full transparency and disclosure and then the choice. And it's certainly up to anybody uh, to write, well, here's why you don't want to give them that information and so forth. Um, there's sure, you know, of course, constitutional restrictions, search warrants and all of that. Unri you know, I don't want the constitution to be under, under, uh, mind and so the right against unlawful se search and seizure should apply to this too yes i'm not saying abandon that did did you read the new york times article probably a week and a half ago about people in my neck of the woods using palantir and other yeah. companies to palantir is problematic i agree <laughs> yeah. but it's not just palantir i mean google and facebook have some of the same information they're just not at this moment making it available as a service to the government, for example. Mm -hmm. But it, they could. And so, and this is where it starts. We need to, if if not, and we can't just shut down everything by saying, I don't want regulation. Because regulation should come from us having conversations about what we want to see and what we value as a society, as a democratic society. And What's happening today is every time we try to have those conversations, we get shut down or we're like, we're not able to meet in the middle and talk about it. We're just like, I don't want any regulation. It's my right. Or I don't want, you know, any of this data anywhere. So I would like to start trying to have these conversations. Yes, I think yeah. you're right. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. And, I, and I'm not going to shout techno panic. Techno panic! <laughs> but, Techno panic! Get it out your system, sir. Get but, it out. Uh, no, it's a, it's just because <laughs> I'm channeling Jeff. But uh, you know, I think this stuff should be regulated. But boy, I did get a little chill down my spine when I heard Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and Kamala Harris and all and you know these these candidates last night saying, "Yeah, we got to break up big tech," because I just feel like the way they're going to break it up is with a buzzsaw. And it's and it's gonna. It's They're not, not really gonna break up tech. They can't. This is, I don't this think is, they can. Yeah, this is campaign talk. Yeah, yeah. But still, I mean, I mean heck, yeah. Warren is so up in up in arms about Facebook, but yet she still uses her account for campaigning. Yeah. Well, she has to. <laughs> By I mean, the way, if she's yeah. not on Facebook. She John Con the election. John Constantine, yeah, I think it was on TechCrunch, had a great proposal. 
here's the solution. Facebook should not sell political ads. Period. Simple enough. Yeah. And then if yeah. a candidate wants to put out a message, they put it on their page. They can lie if they want, whatever. They just shouldn't sell political ads. That's too simple, though. It's a very That's simple solution. <laughs> or they make a lot of they make a lot of money, but they still will make a lot of money. All right. They're not making, you know, that's not the biggest money flowing in. They should just stop selling campaign ads. That's mm -hmm. it, that, that's the problem in a nutshell. That's the Russians bought them last time. They should just not have them. They can have groups all they want. And if people want to share it back and forth and, you know, that's fine. But the ads, I think, are the, maybe I'm wrong, but I agree with Constine. I think that that was exactly the right, Stay tuned simple tomorrow. solution. tomorrow. What's happening tomorrow? Oh, Mark, Mark is talking. Mark, is, Mark will tell us all what he thinks about who should do what on Facebook <sighs> I'm tomorrow. so done with that. And let's, let's, just, let's it. just skip it until then. I'm, I'm so done. I'm so done with this whole thing. It's so sad. <laughs>